Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. I'm Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from the North Shore. And today we have a real happiness topic, the joy of cars, guitars, and light. And to help me with that is my good friend and great hobbyist, Gary Suden. Gary, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Ken. So great to see you. <laughs> it's great to see you. Uh, Gary and I go back a long time. Uh, I hate to say it, but uh, 40 years. I mean, we still look young, I think. But uh, it's been 40 years, and it's been a great friendship. And periodically, Gary sends me pictures of his Jaguar, his beloved Jaguar, which he got a long, long time ago. So originally, I was, yeah, originally I was thinking of, of just doing the program uh, on the joy of Jaguars. But then uh, Gary told me, well, you know, there's a lot more to it than just Jaguars. There's hobbies and the joy that the hobbies give you and the creativity. So, uh, so we've expanded that to include other hobbies. Uh, but first, let's start with the Jaguars uh, and uh, that beloved Jaguar that we just saw on the screen. Gary, tell us about that. So I've owned it now for 50 years, which is almost impossible for me to believe. I, I, had a, I was living in Columbia, Missouri at the time, working on my PhD. And a friend came down in a Jaguar coupe from St. Louis to visit me. And I said, oh, wow, I'd love to have one of those. That would be amazing, but I'd sure like to have a convertible. So this frame that you're seeing now is a car that I built. It took me two years to build it from scratch. And I was 19 to 21 at the time. So I, I had built all these other different kinds of electronics before that. I don't know how many of you might remember Heath kits, but I, I had built stereo systems and color TVs and microwave ovens and all kinds of fun things. So this was me wanting to build something bigger than that. And of course, troubleshooting all those things as well. This was all about education. This was all about creativity. And then a friend of mine came down to Columbia, Missouri, where I was working on my PhD at the time, and he was driving a Jaguar coupe. And he, I said to him, if you could ever find one of these in my price range, which wasn't much, I was an impoverished college student at the time. And if it was a convertible, that would be really great. Well, about three weeks later, he called me long distance and had me uh, come back to St. Louis to look at this car. And it was all rusted out. It was convertible. I was told that if I could get it started, because it hadn't started in six months, and if it had a good clutch, then it was worth the $1,000 they were asking for it. it. Took me three days to get it started. The clutch was good. And I ended up signing my life away for $1,000. Borrowed it from my parents, paid it off in six months, just working as hard as I could to make sure that I didn't owe anyone any money. And that then started a 20-year process to restore that car, welding in new floor pans and uh, eventually figuring out how to convert it from leaded premium gasoline to unleaded premium gasoline. On and on and on, body work and electronic issues and trying to make it more stable and uh, more reliable, certainly. And it, it, all those things were accomplished, but it took 20 years. And some of that is because we had children and oh, life got in the way, but that's what it looks like now. And it's been very reliable and certainly a lot of fun to drive. Uh, problem today is that you just can't drive it to the grocery store. Uh, it's too much of a target, of course, and I don't want a grocery cart running into it. Well, that's <laughs> It, it's amazing that transition, uh, <clears throat> Gary. I learned it, a lot. Yeah, I, I, you must have after twenty years of working on cars. If I had a Jaguar, I would definitely email it back to you and say, "Work on it for me." <laughs> but, I didn't uh, do all the work. I didn't do the body work, and I didn't blueprint the engine. I sent those out, but pretty much everything else I did. Tell us about that joy of when. Uh, it got toward the end, uh, you know, uh, starting to look like the way you wanted it to look like. The joy so, of writing in it after all, after putting it together. So it it did turn out the way I wanted it to. It was a, a real accomplishment. And it's a joy to have that type of accomplishment. Now, 
The other half of that, though, is that I've worked on this now for 20 years. Oh, there's nothing left to do. It's done. And what do I do now? Oh, well, gee, I have other hobbies. And as I, I like to say that I take all my hobbies to extremes. And, and that's completely true. Uh, and, and I have lots of hobbies. It's all about education. It's all about creativity. It's not about owning that car. When people look at it and say, oh, that, that's a beautiful car, I get to tell them, well, Enzo Ferrari was the guy who said that was the most beautiful car in the world. And so that makes me happy, too. But it's about the car. It's not about me. It's, it's, it's the joy that people get from seeing that. It's the joy that I get knowing that I saved its life, that it didn't go to a, a it wasn't simply melted down and, and turned into something else. So that's part of the joy of it as well. You know, the whole thing about, because I was, I was telling Gary, and we, we talked about this as the show came up, that I was into cars too. <clears throat> uh, and I agreed. Uh, that the Jaguar was certainly the most beautiful car around. Uh, but the car I was in love with was the 64 and a half Mustang uh, <laughs> that came out. And uh, I was just going into the military, just got out of college, was going into the military and was going to earn some real money for a change. And so I was able to buy this car on time. And uh, it was amazing because there were so few Mustangs on the road. It was so brand new that I would drive down the road, and if I saw another Mustang, they would wave at me, and I would wave back. It was a real, you know, wonderful thing. But the trouble is I never had the talent that Gary has of getting into it and, and being able to keep it running and working. Uh, so my joy was I, I had a lot of joy with that car, but it would, did not extend to uh, all that. Uh, and that sort of brings me to the, the next hobby that uh, Gary is famous for because it's about guitars. And I love guitar music. I always have because I was brought up in the age of rock and roll. And, uh, but I never got into guitars and, of course, never was able to play them, both of which Gary did. And he really got into guitars. So I think now is a great time to sort of segue over to your hobby of guitars and uh, tell us a little bit about that. Music with me started when I was five. I, I started taking piano lessons. No one in my family, my parents, my grandparents, no one had any musical ability at all. And somehow I, I had the ability, I started playing when I was five. I had lessons at that point. And by the time I was eight, I could play Rhapsody in Blue. And they, they thought I was a prodigy, but I hated my piano teacher, who was this older man who decided that hitting my fingers with a ruler when I hit a wrong note was a really good idea. I didn't appreciate that. So when I was nine, I was in Cub Scouts and other people were starting to play guitar. This was 1960. 1960 being the real beginning of the folk era. And people don't lug pianos around. People lug guitars around. And so I, I first in summer camp, that year, played a ukulele and picked it up right away, and then started playing. I begged, begged my parents for a guitar, but it was forty-five dollars, and my they couldn't afford it. And my there wasn't money for that. And my father was completely against the idea. You'll need lessons. We can't afford the lessons. I begged and begged until finally my mother relented and bought me that forty-five dollar guitar, which. It wasn't long before it fell apart, but I was able to learn. I didn't know how to tune it. It wasn't like there was an internet to show, here's how you tune it. Here's, you know, you could go to the library perhaps, but how do I get to the library? And our school didn't have any books on guitars. So I did what I thought made sense. I tuned it to an open G chord, and then I could just go straight across the neck and get chords out of it. And that's my first Intro, entry to, really to guitar and then there were two other guys in boy scouts who said oh no no you can't tune it like that you you have to tune it like this and then stretch your fingers like this and this and this to be able to make a chord and i picked it up and learned how to do it and i'd already been singing 
I, I actually was, well, at that, about that time, I actually sang in a choir with Leonard Bernstein. That's a whole story in itself. Wow. And so things like that, that I, I started listening, the, the choir, for example, it was a symphony orchestra and Leonard Bernstein and a full choir. And I'm listening to basses and baritones and altos and sopranos and high tenor, me, and wow, listen to all that, how it all works together. And he wrote that, and this is amazing. It was like that with guitar too. Here's three voices now and three guitars. And it's it's education again, it's creativity again. How do you do this? How do you make it work? Who's gonna sing what part? And and so all that came together. I I like to play fingerstyle, as you know. And so fingerstyle guitar is I, I learned that from the song Puff the Magic Dragon. All and right. so if you go back and listen to that, it's do 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 And I actually made in class a piece of paper with six lines on it. And I would take my fingers and go do 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 and practice that over and over until I figured it out. About 10 years ago, I got to meet Peter Yarrow, who wrote that song. And I told him that that's where my entire finger style comes from. And he told me how honored he was to hear that. But that is really where it came from. So I, I learned different tunings. I learned finger style. I started then trying to write my own material as well and take other people's songs and be creative with how I would present those songs as well. And so then strange things and, and so i finally bought a real guitar about 1964 and that was a 12 string guitar and then a few years later i realized i also needed to have a six string guitar so i i bought i saved up worked hard to save up and buy another real guitar but by the early 1970s i found that other people didn't want their old guitars they wanted new guitars and so they'd sell those old guitars at a discount. And I never intended to have a guitar collection, but that's how it happened. People would sell me their old guitar, they'd buy a new guitar and I'd have their old guitar and I'd fix it up, learning again how to fix it up, how to set the action, how to restring it, how to make sure it stayed in tune, the intonation, all those kinds of things. What kinds of strings that did I like? And, and et cetera, et cetera. So, the point there is that, again, education and taking a hobby then to extremes. And one interesting thing happened after a little while, that word old became vintage. That car became vintage. The <laughs> guitars became vintage. And now it's a joy to come into the room where I have the guitars and okay, it's you tonight, and play that guitar and create some sound. They all are like children. They all have an individual characteristic, charisma to them. And they sound better with this song or that song. And so it's it's fun. And yes, I still have some ukuleles. <laughs> you know, I have to tell the audience, there's it's such an incredible gap between Gary's musical talent and mine, uh, that it's just <laughs> awe-inspiring. Uh, when I when I was a kid, and, uh, you know, you have school choirs, you have church choirs and that, and I was always the kid that the director would come to me and say, look, oh, just move your lips, you know, don't <laughs> take it off, you know. <laughs> and then when uh, my parents, uh, when I was very young, thought that I should know how to play music, uh, they signed me up for music lessons and they signed me up for, well, they asked uh, one of the musicians that they knew and he, they said, sign him up for steel guitar. Unlike Gary's guitars, the steel guitar is played on, you know, flat out, uh, which is stuff that uh, people in Hawaii know all about, uh, except they're, you know, we do it with electronic stuff, but I was doing it with a regular guitar, but the everything was set up differently so I could play it like a steel guitar. And I took lessons for a year and I got lots of gold stars for, you know, coming prepared and everything and doing all my lessons and everything. So 
my parents went back to the instructor and said, well, we're ready to sign up for another year. And he said, no, I can't really do that in all fairness. Your son has no musical talent. <clears throat> and, uh, I can't take your money in good faith, which was absolutely true. You know, uh, that Christmas I had played Jingle Bells and nobody knew what I was playing. <laughs> you know, I was playing something so different. But uh, the one thing that I did that Gary and I do agree on and, and uh, meld into is the joy of music. And I love music. I love listening to guitar music. And Shed Atkins, for instance, which Gary is about to talk about. Uh, and it, it makes me, it brings me out of my depression. Music does that to me. I can't do it. I don't have the talent that Gary does, but I have the joy that it brings. And uh, I'm forever grateful uh, for music on that. Uh, maybe it's a good time. You, I know you've got a couple of pictures of guitars, including uh, one of Chet Atkins, who's uh, also one of my favorites of all time. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the different guitars and uh, and how they're a little different. I was uh, very fortunate to be in Seattle one time when there was a guitar auction. And the friend that I was with knew the person that was selling the guitars. So I, I ended up buying eight of them, <laughs> including the one that you see there. That is a Paul Reed Smith. Uh, let's see. Is that the Rosewood Limited? I I can't see it from here. It may be the Rosewood Limited. It might be the Dragon 3. Um, I think it's the Rosewood. I think that's yeah. the and and it's got flowers down the neck, and it's just incredibly gorgeous. It's made by a a company in Virginia, uh, Paul Reed Smith, and it's it's really a lovely playing, lovely sounding electric guitar. Um, I also was able to uh, purchase a hand signed Chad Atkins guitar. That's the one there, and so it. Uh, it was actually played by Chet Atkins and then signed by him. And so I'm very fortunate to have that. It's not one that I play uh, because it's, I, I would hate to accidentally mess up that signature by playing it. So I, I'm fortunate that I have some nice guitars signed by some very, very nice musicians. Uh, Chet Atkins, Leo Kotke, Roger McGuinn from The Birds. I, I have one of his 12-string Rickenbacker guitars. And and these are all, again, it's all about creativity. To play that that Rickenbacker 12-string and play turn, turn, turn on that. And you sound like, you, you sound like Roger McGuinn because that was the way he did it. And it's, uh, it's, it's just, it's brilliant how these musicians were able to uh, create such sound out of gu guitars. I was fortunate a few years ago to be with a friend of mine in upstate New York and actually been on stage with Tommy Emanuel. And that's on YouTube. And and I played that same song for him because he had that refrain written on one of his guitars. So he signed one of my guitars for me, which was very nice of him. Very, very nice man. What about the guitar you just played? Uh... So that's a guitar that I, I had made for me by the Taylor Company, mm -hmm. and I was able to specify everything about it. The scale length, the neck width, the uh, the type of woods. Um, you may not have been able to see that there's actually an armrest on it. And so my arm doesn't, isn't hit by that edge anymore. It's just nice and smooth there. It's, I got to pick out the woods and uh, just everything about it, the neck radius, so it fits my hand really well. And then when I was done, when I finally got it, I don't know if you can see it in the picture, this electronics that's on the back here, but that does automatic tuning. And since I like to play in different tunings, in four seconds, I can be in a different tuning by simply hitting a button. The person that made this guitar, didn't appreciate that I put that on there because he, <laughs> he wanted it to be a, he wanted to be a purist, but I play this guitar out. I, I, none of these, none of these guitars sit in cases. They're not just a, a piece of artwork that somebody puts in the corner and never looks at. The whole goal is to play those guitars. They're all, that's what they're built for. That's what they're meant for. I get upset with people with car shows 
that show up with a trailer and roll the car off the trailer and put it in place. And when the car shows over and they've got their trophy, they roll it, winch it back onto the trailer. They don't drive it. No, the cars are meant to be driven. That's the point. Yeah. Uh, you know, this has been such a great, uh, <clears throat> you know, show uh, with your stories and everything. Uh, it's it's amazing, but we're running out, sort of running out of time. And I was going to ask uh, Gary about his other hobbies because I know he has other hobbies. But we're sort of a little short. And what I like to do at the end of the shows, uh, because we've recently had a tragedy in uh, the islands, the Hawaiian Islands, with the Maui wildfires and everything, and and everybody all over the world is running into these tragedies and these traumas where people are losing everything and becoming asundered from their family and friends and support. I, I wanted to sort of end the show with asking Gary if he would recommend any, uh, what kind of hobbies would he recommend and how would he recommend uh, getting into those and enjoying those so we can sort of get our head out of all the negativity that's in the world right now and just enjoy uh, being there and learning and being creative with a hobby. One of my hobbies is photography. And I, I started that because of my maternal grandfather when I was really 11 years old. I built my first darkroom. And, and I find that that's very satisfying to take a visual image worth a thousand words, literally. So that's easy to do nowadays because your mobile phone usually has a camera in it. And you can take pictures and you can deal with those. And you can edit those easily with a computer. Travel is another really important thing. I think travel is very important because culture is within that travel and you'll learn of other cultures. I see that we're running out of time. So there's one more thing I want to say is that you are unique, just like everyone else. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Gary, I just really appreciate you sharing and being with us and, you know, and, uh, especially the guitar playing and the, the stories about the Jaguar. That, uh, that's great. I hope we can. There's talk. lots more stories. Yeah. And I hope we can talk you into coming back again to hear some of those Very stories. Good. Thank you so much, Ken. Uh, thank you. And thanks to everybody in the audience for joining us. Uh, that's what you're, you know, that's what we're here for is to provide you with something maybe to help you to find some happiness in these difficult times and, uh, so if we succeed at all, uh, drop us a line at Think Tech Hawaii. It might be much appreciated. And be sure and come back next week. Uh, well, not next week. Actually, we come back in two weeks. Same time, same station, et cetera. And we're going to be talking about uh, big, big ideas and big questions again. Uh, because what I find is one of the ways to find happiness is to ask those questions of ourselves. And we tend to sort of ignore those or avoid those. And so... I think you'll find a very interesting show in two weeks and we hope you enjoy us. And of course, thanks to Think Tech Hawaii staff, uh, Michael, uh, Haley and Jay and Carol and everybody. We appreciate your support in this. And uh, like I say, just have a great two weeks and I hope to see you in, in that time back again to again, find some happiness in hard times. Aloha. <laughs>